Welcome to the CNC Auto Show, and I'm Aaron Clements. I'm John Ryan. Whoa, <laughs> we made a we made a pact this morning we, during our uh, pre-show meeting. Uh-huh. We set a goal, and that goal is to give you information on ways to make your car, truck, or SUV safer, more dependable, and to make it last longer for less money and less hassle. And we do that. We like to take your phone calls, 706-863-5800. That's Saturday mornings, 805 to 10 Eastern. And at the same time, you can catch us live on iHeart, WGAC 95.1 FM. And also watch us live on Facebook at CNC Auto Show and past shows on our YouTube channel anytime. And if you or a friend are looking for a good, I'm going to say great, dependable auto repair facility, I recommend going to NapaAutoCare.com and hit the search box in the top right-hand corner, and you will find a list of some of the best repair facilities in the country. That's NapaAutoCare.com. And John Ryan, are we ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go to the calls. All right. Let's go over to Don. Hello, Don, and welcome to the CNC Auto Show, and what could we help you with? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I have a a stall problem. I have an 89 Chevrolet pickup K15 uh, four-wheel drive. It's got the 5.7 fuel injection in it. It's got 240,000 miles on it. A good old truck, kind of hand-me-down from my brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, never had any real problems with it. I was back visiting in Virginia about three weeks ago. And road speed's fine. I pulled off a four-lane highway, rolled up to a stop sign, and the vehicle just died on me, just (laughs) all of a sudden died on me. Uh, started right back up uh, and moved on down the road, but then had to kind of do the two-foot driving operation from there on. <laughs> Every time I'd come to a stop sign, kind of left foot on brake and, and uh, right foot on accelerator just to keep RPMs up. Truck ran fine at uh, operating speed, uh, no miss, no skip, but then seemed like every time I came to a stop sign, uh, it would you know drop down and, and then just die, just stall on me. And uh, in, in the spirit of full disclosure, I, I did uh, let a local mechanic there when I was in Virginia look at it, and they said they adjusted the idle on it. They couldn't really find what the problem was. Mm-hmm. Uh, really hasn't helped the problem. I, I understand that truck has a factory set um, idle, so I'm not sure exactly how they adjusted the idle. Hasn't made it any worse, but really, really hasn't made it any better. So I was just looking they just put a zip tie on the throttle to keep it open a little while. <laughs> well, <laughs> won't I, go look, back I, anyway. I, I, I didn't see a zip tie or anything, but I'm not. It didn't look like the factory cap had been bothered either on that uh-huh. side of the throttle body. So right. I'm not sure what they did. But well, Don, I honestly, that's it. a good thing if they didn't. Um, you know, that vehicle, just like you mentioned, has a factory hard stop, and what that looks, it's it's so that the throttle position sensor always sees you know a minimum voltage um so that's a good thing hopefully they didn't pull that plug out and adjust it because those can be a little tricky to uh, and and don when he does this now i'm gonna find out (laughs) if john ryan's idea matches up with my idea all right well we should make you write it down this time because it always changes That's what do you I want said. My phone num- do you want my phone number to call me back? <laughs> yeah, let's see. Right. Right. Uh, Don, there are a few things that I can think of on that truck. That's an awesome truck. I actually had quite a few of those. Love that engine. Yeah, love I'll, that injection system. Just simple to I work on. I love that old truck. Yeah. Um, I would have said a fuel pump initially because we've had a lot of them. They, that's supposed to generate anywhere from like 11 to 13 PSI. And if it's just slightly low, it will cause that at idle just simply because the engine's loaded. It needs a lot of fuel. But once you said it runs down the road just fine, you know, kind of ruled that out. So obviously it's not going to be a fuel pump. Uh, the IEC, the idle air control valve, those have been notorious for sticking, but normally they actually stick in the high idle position. Uh, so we'll rule that out. The most common um, thing that I can think of, and I think Aaron is right. I, I think I know what is in his mind. Is a distributor. Oh man. The uh, okay, that's not <laughs> clearly that's the fake answer. You thought of something else? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'll put. It, uh, I'll, I'll mention this mm-hmm. crack magnet. Yeah, the crack oh, magnet. Yeah, right. the, the pickup coil in there. It just doesn't generate enough signal at idle. Uh, obviously, you know that vehicle idle is pretty slow, even compared to some uh-huh. of the vehicles today. Um, somewhere in the 600, 650, maybe 700 with AC on. And and when that distributor slows down to that speed, it basically loses sync. It doesn't know when to fire. It, it, it doesn't. Matter of fact, it doesn't even really know it's rotating. Mm-hmm. Um, so it can lose the signal there. 
Um, there, you know, you can put the rebuild the distributor, put a magnet in it, put the pickup and all that kind of stuff in it. But nowadays, the the, the remanufactured or even sometimes new distributors are just a better way to go. Also, mm -hmm. there's a bushing in there that can, you know, say you did all the rebuilding, but you didn't replace the bushing. You know, months from now or six months, a year from now, the bushing could go bad and you have the same problem. So yeah. that magnet on that model is built into the shaft itself, into the top of the That's shaft. That's right, yeah. And it cracks. Yep, and, it does. And when it cracks, it can actually even make the computer think at it, it, times it's going faster and the computer starts trying to pull the idle down, down and down and right. down until it uh until it finally cuts off right and so, yeah, yeah and there was a ton all, of those yeah if you shift it into when you do come to a stop if you shift it into neutral where it's not in drive or reverse uh, right. you know the rpms will kick back up but as soon as if you would put it in gear again it will just die it will just like it's i've uh, got a load on it and that's will right die. Mm -hmm. okay well yeah, that by I, far I really is the most common that common thing that you would run into now there's a lot of other items that can cause it and it um, would still be good to check but, the the data link or but the codes if you hadn't whatnot. replaced the distributor on that one so far you've been very lucky because yeah, they go sure. bad no, normally way before now yep okay well yeah. i haven't i like i said it's a hand-me-down from my brother and i haven't driven the truck it's like a third or fourth vehicle i love the truck i'd soon drive it as anything i have yeah absolutely. but uh you know it's probably you know 1500 2000 miles a year is about all i drive it and uh -huh. it just happened all of a sudden you know it never had any problems but just yeah. came to that rolling stop and it just died on me so i, I really do appreciate it i yeah, had sure. googled a little bit and i know some problem uh some people start replacing parts, and <laughs> that's not the way to go. So, right. um, Don, I, isn't I it funny how you. a truck that you drive so little when it's broke down you can't sleep, you have to fix it? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. It just stays with you all the time. It like, what is, what is wrong with that truck? Yep. Well, I really appreciate the advice. This Thank you, Don. We appreciate much. the call. Yeah, that's what I love it. about trucks. You can get a truck, and it can be... It can it can be uh, an even a, a earlier model truck. Right. It can have a lot of miles on it, and it's still neat. Yeah. I mean, you, you look even, at even it, some of the non desirable fun. ones. So, you yeah. know, they still hold value. They still you know serve a purpose, and yeah. really hard to even, uh, get that, rid of. Even when you get into trucks that you would normally think of in the seventies was not a great year for domestic cars. No, not at all. Yeah. But like the Chevrolet in in Ford. Yeah, the C ten, F one hundred, like seventy two, seventy three, and all that. Yep. The cars now you wouldn't even dream of, uh -huh. of like fixing up a seventy two Caprice, yeah. Unless there was something really weird about it, you wouldn't you wouldn't fix it up. But right. a seventy two model Ford truck, you would do it. That's right. Yeah, yeah but and, and they're and they're doing very well, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, we uh, I did two things. I did not mention the part having to do with the theme of the show, so I'm gonna do that really quick. All right. And the theme of the show has to do with emergency situations. Uh, a lot of times people may find themselves with a car upside down. What do you do? A car that's going into water, what do you do? We'll answer a lot of those questions during the show today. The other thing I didn't get a chance to do was the tech tip quiz. Well, you got so one I'm minute. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to skip to it really quick, and I'm not going to name all the prizes like I normally do. I'll just say that Owen and Shelly were leaving their mom's house to head home. She was driving a Chevy Spark, and he was driving a 2016 Corvette. It was an hour drive. He was running 75 to 80 most of the way, and Shelly never exceeded the 55-mile-an-hour speed limit. How did Shelly get home and in the house before Owen got home? Mm. If you know the answer to that question, you can give us a call. And, of course, along with all the other great prizes that you can win, you would also win the coveted I Answered the CNC Auto Show shirt all right. that will get you in almost anywhere. Okay, we'll be right back after these messages welcome back to the cnc auto show i had a phone call come in earlier this week uh -huh. and it was a listener in columbia south carolina uh -huh. and this listener was very nice she had a question she was wondering if if really price wasn't a major issue mm -hmm. with her and but safety was. She wanted a car with a lot of really good safety features. Okay. And she asked me the question of what car would I get? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, that's a, that's an unusual question. Yeah. And all sorts of things popped into my head. I was thinking, well, wow, Jaguars, and mm -hmm. uh, you would have just, I mean, just, you need all, a lot of money for just that. across the board, BMWs and all kind of other cars uh, popped into my head. But the one that really popped in my head and stood out the most, mm -hmm. for some reason, 
was a Cadillac SRX. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, the ones with the pop up screen to mm -hmm. where you cut the uh, key on and the screen pops up. And of course, no doubt, all the safety features. You've got your lane departure warnings. You got your blind spot warnings. You yeah. got your uh, backup sensors. You got your backup camera, mm -hmm. uh, and just uh, hands off steering. Just so many wonderful features that you can get on that car. Right. And uh, I, I couldn't help but think of that. Think that one. That Cadillac SRX. I'm gonna ask you real quick before we go to the next caller. What would you have said to that question, John Ryan? Mm, now, you did say car, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd say car and truck. You can do either one. You know, I don't. Mm, well, I mean, a truck, I would say a 2500 uh, Duramax. Um, well, that's what I'm you trying, already have. <laughs> yeah, but I was trying to think of the safer vehicles. Right. I don't know. Volvo, I don't know if they still hold the, the highest safety ratings. At one time, they did. Um, you think I don't know. about it. Yeah, I'll think back. about that. I'll come back with let's you. Let's go to that. the callers. All right, let's go over to Margo. Hello, Marco. Welcome to the CNC Auto Show. Hi. Hi. I'd like to answer the tech tip. Please. Well, you called the right place because we're going to put you on stage first. <laughs> now we are ready for the answer to the tech tip quiz. Okay. There wasn't a thing wrong with that Corvette. You just got a speeding ticket. Whoa. Well, you are absolutely right. Now, along with that, even before he got the speeding ticket, though, he had problems because what he was doing is he would speed up 75 and 80, and then he would get to the next stoplight and boom, slow down. And then the little Chevy Spark would just ease up <laughs> finally and pull up beside it. Hey, Aaron. And then the light would, <laughs> and then the light would turn green. And then the Corvette would take off <laughs> 75, 80 miles an hour. And then he would stop at the next light. The little Chevy Spark, he's <laughs> come up beside it. And, uh, and then finally, the ticket was the one that topped it all off, the speeding ticket. So, of course, he was sitting there while the officer very nicely wrote up the ticket <laughs> and, and handed it to him. Now, when he got home, Shelly, that was driving the Spark, she just grinned and smiled. <laughs> that was until the next insurance came due. <laughs> then she was not happy. It was not pretty at all. So it does no good <laughs> to go faster. It really doesn't. And, and like John Ryan mentioned, I find that out quite often. Yep, he does in his little Prius. Well, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I haven't been driving the Prius lately. I've been driving the little Mazda Miata. Yeah. Yeah, and it's been a lot of fun. I've been enjoying the little Mazda. Yeah. Okay, now, Margo, mm. you will now be known that very few people will call you Margo now. You'll be standing there, and you'll see somebody pointing at you and whispering, she's the one that won the tech tip quiz. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be really kind of wild. And uh, so uh, if you hang on the line, they will get all your information and they will discreetly package all of this stuff because they have had a problem when the FedEx people deliver this stuff on the porch. On people are already there waiting. I thought it was with a drone. Yeah, with a drone. Uh, yeah, they're dropping off with a drone. <laughs> so, so Margo, stay on the line and they'll get your information and we'll get you the details on uh, how to get all your prize stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Margo. Appreciate you calling. Appreciate you answering the question. Okay, the number to call, 706-863-5800. Uh, John Ryan, I was going to mention something that um, uh, that uh, come up last week. Yeah. The owner of a car installed a pair of these really neat exhaust diverters okay. on his car. Right. And the car he happened to put it on was a 2017 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Oh, man. All right. Very Doesn't nice. Doesn't even need right? those. All right. There was a small issue. What's that? All right. The uh, the noise, it was so loud, it was sort of determined that it would most likely cause hearing loss. I believe it. So that was an issue. But the other larger issue was that when he punched it with the diverters in the open position, mm -hmm. He had a, an issue because his airbags went off. Actually, it was the side airbags. Oh, wow. The diverters 
created a sound and a vibration. They were fairly close to the crash sensors. That set the crash sensor To on. where the crash sensors thought that uh, the vehicle was in an accident. Wow. And so uh, the curtain airbags went off. Mm. And, and I'm going to tell you now, curtain airbags are not really cheap. No, not at all. All right. Now we're gonna move on into the other part that we uh, that we talk about, and that is the emergency situations that people have. Now, what what do you think would be the thing to do if your car went off the road mm-hmm. and flipped, and now you are upside down? Mm, I don't know. I've always well, I guess I was gonna say, are the windows still in it or no? Uh, as far as I know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, of course you'd have to break the window, but number one, you're upside down, most likely buckled in. So you kind of have to yeah, brace you're conscious yourself and you're unharmed. Okay. But what do um, you do next? Well, of course you'd have to support yourself before you let the seatbelt go. Exactly. That's, that's number very one. good tip. Um, and then if, if the windows are break broke, a lot of times you'd have to find something that you could break the window with. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people use the headrest. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. You know, you slide the headrest out, um, and then just. Care, uh, you know, get out carefully. I don't see how you can get the headrest out if you're buckled into the seat. Maybe the other side, may, maybe you yeah. might be able to get it out. Yeah, but you might be able to find something. But that is a mistake that some people make. They're upside down in a car. The car's been in a terrible accident, and they uh, they not sure what to do. So they boom, unbuckle their seatbelt and like a sack of potatoes. And fall, <laughs> yeah, and then they fall and have a, a problem. So brace yourself before doing that, and uh, and then call nine one one. Okay, we oh wow, time to take another break and when we return we'll have more tips and look for more questions. 706-863-5800. We'll see you shortly. We have been talking about uh, emergency situations mm-hmm. and answering automotive questions. I'll mention also if you have either one a question or if you have had an emergency at one time in a car, right? And you uh, you want to share it and also, you can you can do that, but let us know what you did, uh, whether it was good or bad. That way, we know what did not work. <laughs> if there you, you go. If you were in that emergency situation, now, John Ryan, we talked before. What do you do if a car is overturned? Overturned, right. mm-hmm. and you mentioned that it's not a good idea just to break the seatbelt loose because you'll fall on your head. Yeah, it might cause more damage. Might be painful. Yep. Uh, so. Uh, that's and the good thing is that you were buckled in, right? Because that's the number one thing uh, in, in being safe is buckle those seat belts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you read about uh, more accidents where somebody wasn't buckled in good and, right. or buckled in at all, and, and it being catastrophic uh, type For uh, sure. situations. So keep those seat belts buckled, front seat and back seat. Mm-hmm. Uh, all those in the Very car important. do that. But here's another one. What would happen if you were driving a vehicle mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, boom, it ends up in the water? Mm. Let's say a, a, a flood somewhere and you're riding along and the flood just takes your car and washes it away and it starts to sink. Yeah. Uh, I would say first thing for me that pops in my mind is if the vehicle has a sunroof, try mm-hmm. the sunroof because uh, most of the mechanic or the electric motors will still work you know, for a very short period of time. And that's uh-huh. the easiest window to get out of. Uh, if the windows are up again, you can. A lot of people carry those, you know, glass breaking hammers or again the headrests. Uh-huh. Uh, the headrests slide out, and of course you can use the metal rods yeah. to break the window. So in other words, what you want to do is get those windows open right. as quickly as possible. Quick as possible. Yeah, and that way the water will equalize. I wouldn't say those. windows though, because that makes the that will make the vehicle take in water faster. Mm-hmm. So well, whichever the, window. Yeah, if you happen to have a sunroof, but the but the thing is. What they're uh, what they're recommending is that is it, that you're instead of waiting until the car is all the way down right. and water rushing through there, you can't get out that area mm-hmm. if the water is rushing through it. That's not, so you want to try to get all those down as quickly as possible and get out. So it's best yeah. to do all the windows. That according to what I'm hmm. reading, yeah, I would think it, you would only do one, so it wouldn't take in as much yeah. water. It will sink faster, yeah. but the thing is, you won't have water rushing in the okay. area that you're trying to get out of. That makes sense. Yeah, and, and you're and you're trying to get out of there, and and you want to do that quickly. Now, in in a lot of times, people will carry these little gadgets mm-hmm. that will break a window. You hold it up to it, you push a button, and boom, it breaks the window. Right. Uh, so it's not bad to have one of those. And those same gadgets, they make some that will also cut, cut the seatbelt. Seat right. It'll do do both at the same time. So having things like that, and I think the, the main thing is having some type of little plan 
uh, stuck in the back of your mind. Right. So that you can, uh, if something were to happen, you could, uh, you, you would say, well, this is what I would do. And then yeah. it's kind of surprising how things like that pop back into your head mm -hmm. if that uh, if something like that were to come up. It is. So, uh, so of course, the next step, start swimming. That's right. <laughs> and, get a, and, and, of course, getting anyone else that might be in the vehicle out as quickly as possible also. Right. Uh, the, the best thing, though, is to avoid that situation. It is. If you see standing water and you're not sure how deep it is, uh, don't go through yeah, it. Yeah, just avoid it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn around, go the other way, and you're way ahead. Okay, if you got a question about your car, truck, or SUV, give us a call. The number to call is 706-863-5800. That's Eastern Time on any Saturday morning uh, from any location. And give us that call. I did think of that vehicle that you were asking me about. Oh, you, okay. Now, yeah, we had talked about I what about vehicle it a bit. would you get if really money was no object. Right. Uh, but safety features were uh, a, a concern. No, right, I think I'd get a 2016, well, no, probably 17 now that they're out, uh, GMC Denali, Yukon. Denali. Yeah, um, with all the, like you said, the blind spot and, uh, you know, all the lane departure and all that stuff because uh -huh. um, those are really, really nice. It would have yeah. to have the 6.2 in it, though. Yeah, I love all that, that technology that they put on the cars now that you can get. I mean, yeah. just uh, uh, all the backup cameras, lane departures, laser cruise. I mm -hmm. love. I mean, laser cruise is a really neat thing to have. He did you know, heated steering wheel is pretty cool, too. Yeah, heated steering wheel, <laughs> just beautiful stuff. All right, let's go over to Tony. I'm ready to go to Tony. Hello, Tony, and welcome to the CNC Auto Show. Hey, good morning. You was talking about that car that ran off the road and turned over and you weren't hurt. Yes. And you was talking about things to think about and ways to get out. Uh -huh. A lot of people get hurt after a car accident because they get out of a car and they get electrocuted from a down oh. power line. Good point. Very good point. If, if you are unhurt, and there's no smoke or reason to get out of the car, sometimes you are safer to stay in the car until emergency help arrives. Yes. If you see a down, especially if you see a down power line somewhere, uh, what will happen is let's say that even if you get out and you get out in a way to where you don't touch the door, when you put one foot more than so many inches in front of the other foot, the electrical current will flow through one foot, through your body, back out the other foot, mm -hmm. and boom, you're uh, you're, yep. you're uh, in trouble, <laughs> in bad trouble. Uh, and it, and of course, if you did have to get out, now this is what, from what I understand, uh, that should be done, is if you do have to get out and you see power lines on and you see smoke coming out the car, you say I got to go. You should try to get out without touching any of the metal items in the car. And then you should take little bitty baby steps and almost keep your feet connected together as you go. And that keeps the current from going from one and then get about 35 feet away from the car and tell everyone else to stay about 35 feet away from the car. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that, you, if, uh, we were told to uh, don't take steps. You want to slide your feet. Never yes. lose contact with the ground. Very. Yeah. Excellent point. I like that. Yeah, and absolutely right. All right, too. just thought I'd pass that along. That was a good tip, Tony. Thank you. Yep. Okay, if anyone else has any tips about uh, what to do in an emergency situation on a car, give us a call. That number is 706-863-5800 Eastern Time. And what about a stuck throttle? What would you do if you're, if you're riding along and you're throttle just sticks a lot of people i'm just so surprised at how many people just ride that out just wait to hit something yeah. but the, the first thing i mean every vehicle is designed this way put it neutral it won't go anywhere yeah exactly. it's that simple it really yeah, is that was a that was a question i had a long time ago there was some type of lawsuit it was the toyota, toyota yeah and, and i think it was a prius yeah, but and they, they were, were saying off. that they rode for like 20 minutes and yeah. the throttle stuck. And not only down. that, I mean, if you, if you can't remember to put it in neutral, shut it off. Yeah, <laughs> there's, a, there's an answer to that. But most of the time, if your throttle by some chance sticks, it's very, very rare, rare. on modern cars. It's, all, it's got to the point it's next to impossible. Right. Now, there is going to be some chances. Well, of, I mean, because, there's course, always the chance you're Well, cars are being hacked now. I mean, well, if, if someone were to hack into your car... Yeah, but even before that, you know, the floor mat could get stuck yeah. and, and push it down. And and as a matter of like fact, that. there's a movie about that speed. <laughs> but <laughs> let's say that if something was to happen like that, 
you, you I mean, you, you do want to know what to do, but it would be rare. But first step, kind of pat the gas a few times. All right, Aaron, and, let's go over to Shane real quick before a break. Excellent. I'm ready. Hey, Shane, welcome to the CNC Auto Shop. Hey, guys, how's it going? Very nice. Just wanted to call in. First thing you need to do when you get into a car accident mm-hmm. is shut the car off before you do anything. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, I've seen a car accident over there off of Bel Air Road. Little Corvette went up underneath the truck and just hit him over on his side. Uh-huh. Another thing everybody tried to help from the side of the car that, that's hot, where the exhaust and stuff was all moving and uh, wheels were turning and stuff. And that's what I was trying to tell the guy in the car to shut the car off so we could help him. Uh huh. So after he shut the vehicle off, we could all help him a little better. And you want to stay away from the exhaust side of the vehicle when it's turned over. Shane, if he yeah. shut the car off, the AC wouldn't have been going. Yeah, that's right. That's true. <laughs> yeah, and Shane, uh, Shane, some vehicles do have a sensor, an impact sensor, to you. where, oh, let's say that, are if, correct. yeah, if it's in enough of an accident, it will cut the fuel off and, of course, the car cut off. But a lot of cars don't. Uh, right. and, and I don't yeah. know the reason why some cars have it and some cars don't, but many, many cars do not have impact sensors. So if it's involved in an accident, uh, even if the airbags go off and all that, and the car stays running, uh, you could also have a fuel leak of some kind. Right. And, and if you have fuel leaking and of course the engine's running sooner or later, you got a catastrophe cutting the car off also cuts the fuel pump off. So you don't uh, you don't have that problem with the uh, possibility of fuel getting all over the ground when you do that either, uh, Shane. That's yep. a great tip. Cut the car off as quickly as possible. All right, thanks, guys. Just want to drop that off, y'all. Yeah, great thanks. tip too. Thank you. And if anyone else has a great tip, uh, 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 what to do in an emergency situation or a question about your car, truck, your SUV, all you have to do is give us a call on that number 706-863-5800, and that's Eastern Time from anywhere that you might be. And we're going to be taking a real quick break, and when we return, we'll be talking more about those emergency situations, and we'll be answering those automotive questions. That and a whole lot more as soon as we return with the CNC Auto Show. With a blowout, what do you do if you blow a tire? You're going down the road, John Ryan, and uh, bloom. Boom. <laughs> bloom. Uh, bloom. Uh, <laughs> you have a bloom. Well, of course, the most important thing is to keep um, you know control of the vehicle. Don't um, you know cause any sudden movements or anything like that mm-hmm. to wear the vehicle overturn. Uh, best thing is to slow down at a, at a decent rate. Don't jam on the brakes or anything like that. And, of course, mm-hmm. trying to get your vehicle off the road. Um, from there, obviously, you know, sometimes it's better to call a tow truck depending on where it is to get it off the side of the road. For instance, if it's on a, you know, four lane highway with barriers on both sides, you wouldn't necessarily want to change a tire out there. So sometimes it it may cost a little bit, but it's also cost, you know, you're pretty much right on the money. And and that's the main thing is avoid, try not to, if it blows while you're driving, try not to make a sudden steer left or right or or lock the brakes up. Uh, you want to try to steer a little bit straight, but kind of drift off the road That's the right. very best you can, and that and that way you're less prone to go into any kind of spin or anything like that. And and then of course try to get into a parking lot. Right. Uh, it's it's uh it's really not a great idea to try to change a tire. On yeah, the side I'm just of the not a big fan of it. And uh, you know, we were talking about this not too long ago that car manufacturers I think are realizing that too. Um, obviously you see a lot of new cars too. Um, I don't know what percentage it is, but a lot of them don't even come with a spare. Yeah, more and more of them. And some uh, of us to do with room, but some of us do right, with some safety. Right, some of us do with room, some of us do with safety, and some of us do with just the practicality of it. You know, not many people want to change a spare tire. They would just assume call, you know, a tow truck or exactly. something like that. But the number one thing that we recommend doing as far as that type situation is keep your tires in good shape. You hear of so many accidents, and yep. I see so many cars Neglected that have tires. worn tires that were in an accident because right. we're repairing something that had to do with the accident. And you look at it, and the tires are worn out. Yeah. And then you fix the accident, and you get the car back, and the tires are still worn out. I would say 75 out. 80% of the, the body shop vehicles we have or see or do have tires I would that say are that just too. So well, well overdue Keep those tires in good shape. We're ready to go to the calls? Yeah, let's go over to Tom. I am ready myself. Hello, Tom. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate you guys putting the show on. I've been listening to you for years. Oh, man, uh, you made my morning. Thank you. <laughs> um, I've got a 2003 Cadillac DeVille, and um, – has started giving me the idiot light for ABS and traction control whenever I hit a good-sized bump with the passenger side tires. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I hit a pothole 
or you know, not all bridges are nicely contoured to the roads next to them. So sometimes, <laughs> if I, sometimes if I hit those um, driving along at traffic speed, um, it's not every time, but it does happen more frequently when the weather's hot. Mm-hmm. But uh, as soon as I hit a bump, I'll get the little chime, and the idiot light says ABS and traction control. Mm-hmm. I often think that every time I go over a bridge like that, there's an alignment shop right after it or something like that, <laughs> part of their marketing. <laughs> this pothole is sponsored by <laughs> yeah. Joe's Automotive. Yeah, uh, alignment specialist. Uh, Tom, that's very, uh, very good and a uh, good description of what's going on. That's great that you've kind of narrowed it down to a side um, you said 03 um, Cadillac. So the, the great thing about that is that it does have, a, uh, of course, a traction control module, ABS module that will report uh, different things like history codes. Uh, that's a very important thing because, of course, if the light's not on, a technician can still go into that vehicle and see which sensor is, is dropping out. Uh, those Cadillacs had some issues with the connector. Of course, obviously, that wheel speed is on the end of the uh, where the CV axle is, the bearing is, and there's a little 90 degree bend where it goes from the spindle to the control arm, the lower control arm. And they were kind of notorious for working loose. The, the the pigtail would just, you know, lose contact there and lose the reference as far as how fast that wheel's going, set that light. That would be the first thing I would check. Of course, a technician would kind of go at it the different route. Number one, they would drive it, try to get it to do it, read the history codes, see what codes are in there. If it's a circuit code, they're going to be looking for something like a, you know, electrical fault. It could be something for like a wheel variation speed, meaning that all the sensors are reading, but one's reading faster or slower. Um, so it just kind of depends what codes in there. But that's the as far as common issues that I can think of is the the speed connection. And Tom, you might start also with just jacking the car up and or having it jacked up and did find out if there's any play in those wheels if right. either one of those bearings have excessive play then that can do it now normally you would have a noise to go along with it so it may not necessarily be it but feel for play and and every send, now send and the then, bill to that bridge yeah <laughs> and then every now and then <laughs> you'll see some a, a lot of dust on one now i doubt that's going to be the case on yours but right uh that's that's one of the things but it sounds like you more than likely have a wheel speed sensor going bad right okay i was wondering if it was just because of its intermittency and only when it is something is jarring it um i was thinking a loose connection but mm-hmm. uh okay and, so and, i should that, that's that's what I was mentioning as far as that that pigtail on the front yes, um, side the the connection you're exactly right what will happen is it it won't physically come unplugged or anything like that right. but the terminals may not have enough tension on it to where it loses that now there are things too there's a little relay inside the ABS module uh, unfortunately it's non-serviceable but you know if you're hitting that bump and it's jarring the car enough it could be you know uh, rattling those contacts to the point to where it loses contact yeah. um, of power and it all stem from what code is exactly and, and that's you know the most important do. thing. Um, mm-hmm. to, to find out. Okay, okay. so it sounds, sounds like there's two things I can do, and that's check for uh, play in the wheels and right. uh, 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 disconnect all those connections, put a little, little electrolyte grease on them, stick them back together, and if that doesn't fix it, come see you guys. There okay. you go. That'll work. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call. Number to call is 706-863-5800. Who will we be talking to now, John Ryan? Let's go over to John. Hey, John, welcome to the CNC Auto Show. Good morning. I'm enjoying your show again. We enjoying your calling. Appreciate it. And uh, I was just wondering, I kind of tuned in late. Has anybody mentioned a working fire extinguisher and a first aid kit in your car? Whoa. Now, the 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 first aid kit, I think that is an excellent idea. And a fire extinguisher is a great idea. It's just very few people actually carry a fire extinguisher. I will say that. And I can't. And I have to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. I don't normally carry a fire extinguisher in my regular cars. Now, the right. little Model A that we have, I do. I have one. I hadn't actually put it in there yet, but I did buy one for a Model A because I heard that sometimes they'll uh, just uh, start burning. Uh, but as a general rule, I don't normally carry a fire extinguisher. First aid kit, I think, is a very important thing that everyone should should keep. I think it's a good tip. Um, that's one thing that I, I'm never a big fan of fire. That's one thing that's kind of uncontrollable. So mm-hmm. I've, I have fire extinguishers in my truck, um, and it's just something I've always lived by. Just Not that I'll ever plan on using it, but, you know, it's there if I have to. So you need to be near me if I have. <laughs> that's if right. my car catches on fire, I hope John Ryan's the one that rides by. That's right. <laughs> but, John, up. that is great tips, really good tips. And, and fire extinguishers are so inexpensive, and they really you can get them fairly small. Yeah. So I think it would be an excellent thing for everyone. The speed limit is 35 miles per hour. Slow down, John. Okay, 
<laughs> Have a good yeah, day. Yeah, you caught me again, Ernst. <laughs> yeah, you was uh, at speed limit's 55, John. That thing said 75, I believe. <laughs> Y'all have a good day. You Thank too. you, John. You too. Number to call, 706-863-5800. John Ryan, I'm going to leave it up to you. Let's try it. Let's okay, go straight let's to Terry. See hey, if we Terry. Can catch welcome up. to the show. Hey. Uh, I just have a question. I have a uh, 04 2500 uh, HD that has started burning oil for no unexplained reason. Mm-hmm. And we've had the valve cover replaced on it, but it's still kind of is burning oil and i didn't know if y'all had any other suggestions terry evidently this is a gas 2500 correct um just the first one was going to be the valve cover do you know if they replaced the pcv hose and the, the the valve right there that of course connects to it no that i do not know find that out because that that's sometimes overlooked no doubt the valve cover does have that issue as far as the baffle being restricted but one one thing that's overlooked is that PCV system. If it's restricted too, it's not pulling that that crankcase vapors out of there, and uh, no doubt half the repair has been done. But but definitely check that out because that's fairly common to uh, uh yeah, you know, PCV system. Out. You got to think of ventilation flowing through the engine. It's got to have a got to have a way to reburn it. Then for it to go through the engine, and then a, then of course the valve cover and the PCV valve PCV hose, uh, mm-hmm. then back into that. Okay. Okay. All right. If the, okay. One more question. If that gets replaced, should that correct the problem, or is that just it, historic an issue with that truck? Not so much. That that truck's pretty. You know, as far as the issue goes, that's normally the common one. One thing that's good to do is a, a carbon clean, also because there's a lot of oil built up in the intake manifold, and it would take months and months before it'll all burn out of there. So. And that will keep it from getting uh, getting worse. Right. Terry, we had to we had to close. But if any other questions on that, give us a call back. Time clocks on E. Uh, Thank you for tuning in to the CNC Auto Show, and we will be back with you in no time.